In this video, everything you need to know about going on holiday to Puerto de la Cruz in Tenerife. If you haven't booked yet, this is also a great way to see what to expect and if Puerto de la Cruz is actually the right holiday destination for you or not. Also in this video, we're going to have a look at some tips that will make your holiday even better. A few small things that can save you loads of money and as well a few small things to watch out for. How is the beach in Puerto de la Cruz? Well, actually, there are more than just one. On one side of the resort, you will find the largest beach, the Playa del Castillo, as well as some smaller neighboring beaches, a large black sand touristy beach. On the other side, you will find the Playa Martianes, closer to town, but otherwise pretty much the same. The Playa Martianes has some higher waves and often also some more wind and therefore is pretty popular with surfers. Most often the one you will go to will be a little bit decided on where your hotel is located as they are pretty far from each other. There are many other swimming locations in Puerto de la Cruz as well, but these are mostly uh, pebble beaches or some kind of rocky structures. In Puerto de la Cruz you will find many great hotels. Uh, the ones you're seeing on your screen right now are among the best value for money out there. If you've already kind of like made a pre-selection and you more or less know which hotel you would like, know that you can always contact me on my email address and I will be happy to give you a second opinion so you can really know if this hotel is right for you or not. Puerto de la Cruz has a pretty active nightlife, especially in the peak season. A lot of it is based around an older generation who like to come here to do some dancing and have some cocktails, but there are also some clubs for a younger generation. Do keep in mind that outside of the school and university holidays, these might only be open in the weekends or be totally closed for some weeks. The dancing for the older generation is an all year round thing with many live musicians playing well into the night for all audiences. So there's loads of great things to do in Tenerife and also near the Puerto de la Cruz. One thing I can definitely advise, and you will see a little yellow trains for this driving around, is the Loro Park. It's a great zoo nearby. There's loads of shows as well, and it's a very good zoo. So do go and have a look there, definitely. One thing I would also definitely advise you to do is to get up tide. It's one of these things you're always said when you go to Tenerife, you have to do them. Do keep in mind that it is a very nice excursion, but in the daytime, it can get a little bit too busy. There's too many buses. It takes away from the entire experience. I would advise you to go either in the nighttime for the star sky experience or in the evening for the sunset. It's a much more unique experience and I'm pretty sure you will enjoy it much more than going in the daytime. Since Puerto de la Cruz is in the north of the island, I would definitely advise you to rent a car because you're pretty far away from all the other places and all the other things to see and do that are more towards the south of the island, so the other side. Also, with a car, you can easily get from your hotel to the beach because in Puerto de la Cruz, quite a few of the hotels are further uphill or further away, so a car could be very helpful here to get around, also to do your shopping uh, uphill. The one thing I would advise if you're renting a car, rent it at the airport with a good company. There's also some tricky companies out there you don't want to be renting with. If you want to find the full list of the companies that I like to use, you can find this on my website. That is checkedholidays.com slash cars. Puerto de la Cruz has a very large selection of restaurants. The great thing I find here is that Puerto de la Cruz is also a real town, so not everything is aimed at tourists. Many of the restaurants offer great and real authentic Spanish traditional dishes and tapas. My advice would be to go where the local population eats as they know most likely where it is best. Prices are pretty fair in most places and all the meals I had were well prepared and well served.
When you are traveling to the Puerto de la Cruz, know that you can find a lot of random flyers on the street, sometimes offering free or very cheap discounted excursions. Don't be accepting any of this or booking with any of this because most of the time you're going on a very short excursion and after that you will have to sit through a very long sales presentation. Um, so basically it isn't interesting. Also, when you are walking on the beach or on the street, sometimes they will walk up to you and offer you like a free lottery ticket. As soon as you scratch it, you suddenly have won this grand price but basically you have to pick it up somewhere else and that other place you have to pick it up is basically like a sales presentation for some kind of timeshare you have to sit through so don't be dealing with any of this it ain't worth it also on the beach, sometimes people walk up to you and offer you some kind of free food. Most of the time this is fruit, but as soon as you like tried it, you now have to buy like a full slice of them and it's gonna cost you a load of money. Uh, so as soon as someone offers you something on the beach for free, just say no and don't deal with this. So Tenerife for many years had this name of having cheap electronics and this is kind of true because of the lower sales tax. However, in a lot of cases this doesn't really matter anymore. In Puerto de la Cruz you will find many stores advertising cheap electronics, but this is mostly because they do tricky things like offer you fake brands or copies or they play tricks on your credit card or they will package things and then don't put the actual product inside that you thought you were buying. I'm not saying all stores do this, but they are out there in between all the stores. So pay very good attention in general. If you're traveling to Tenerife and you don't need to be buying any electronics, just buy them at home instead, where you at least, if you're from within the European Union, guaranteed a two year full guarantee on any electronic products, which you may or may not get when buying it in Tenerife. So when going to Tenerife, general rule, don't buy any electronics if you don't urgently need to. So do know that Tenerife is a very nice place, but in all my videos I like to inform about the good and the bad things with the end goal of you having a better holiday. If you want to find all my videos covering Spain, Tenerife and other holiday destinations, that's about over 500 videos now. If you want to find all of them even more easy and be prepared and have a great holiday, then do know you can subscribe to the channel by simply clicking the subscribe button and then you can find all my videos even more easy. So how is the best way for you to get to the Puerto de la Cruz? Well, this depends a little bit. Know that there is two different airports on Tenerife. The one in the north is much, much closer by. So most of the time, this will be the best option for you. Also in the north, uh, generally you find the cheaper flights depending on the country you are coming from. The south might also be an option, but in this case, I would advise the north and I will be talking for the north from a bus. It will cost you five euros. From the south, it will cost, of course, much more. Um, from the north, it will cost you five euros and we'll take you there in about 40 minutes. Uh, there is no shuttle buses. If you're looking for a shuttle bus that will take you directly to your hotel, you cannot find these in the North Airport, but you can find them from the South Airport and it will cost from the South Airport 18 euros and 90 minutes, so one and a half hour to you, uh, for you to get to your hotel. Another option would be to take a taxi, a taxi from the North Airport, so the one that's closer by is 30 euros and will get you there in just under 20 minutes. Um, know that bus tickets, you can just buy on the bus. Shuttle or taxi tickets, I would advise booking before online. The shuttle you can, uh, you have to book before online and a taxi, I would advise it for a lot of reasons, especially if you're traveling with small children or if you want a locked in price and no unpleasant surprises, um, I would advise going to my website Website the checkedholidays.com slash links where you find all the companies I travel with when going to Tenerife. So when is the right time for you to be visiting the Puerto de la Cruz area in Tenerife? Well, know that Puerto de la Cruz in winter is very popular with many of the colder Scandinavian countries because of the mild climate over here. November, December, January, February and March specifically are the winter months here on Tenerife. Uh, the average temperature is going to be around 21 degrees Celsius and the low is going to be around 15 degrees Celsius. So the average temperature, meaning that there's going to be plenty of days when it's going to be hot as well. Um, the rain is about five or six days a month. Puerto de la Cruz normally gets a little bit more rain than the rest of the island, so five or six days a month. And the sea temperature is going to be around 19 degrees Celsius, so a little bit nippy, a little bit fresh and refreshing to take a dip. 
So Puerto de la Cruz is a little bit of a more wet climate, so especially in winter it can get a little bit more rain. Um, if you want to visit Puerto de la Cruz and be guaranteed of the best weather, I would go May, June, July, August and September. Um, the average temperature is around on the high of 25 degrees and on the low of 19 degrees, but many days it's also going to be hotter than this, uh, because this is just the average temperature. Rain is one day a month, rain is only one day a month, so pretty much guaranteed not to see any rain on your holiday and the sea temperature is about 22 degrees celsius so April and October are basically an exception to the rule of the summer and winter. They are the months that go in between. So basically you can call them autumn and spring if you want. Um, March and November together with April and October are normally the months when you can find the best deals on Tenerife, especially if you're looking outside of any Easter holidays or any other school holidays, you can find some really good deals. So if you're traveling on a budget, still want nice weather, and then March, April, October, November definitely are good months to have a look. If you're not 100% sure if this is the right holiday destination for you, then do know you can have a look at this video where I cover all the holiday destinations in Tenerife. And if you already know that this is the right holiday destination for you, you can click here to go to the website and there you can find the selection of the best hotels. And you can also instantly price compare them to see which one is the best one for you.